Hey guys, welcome to Memory Lane. My name is Source of Food. And if you're happening on this channel for the first time, this is where we talk about childhood memories and specifically my childhood memories. I was born in the early 60s, so we're talking about growing up in the early 60s into the 70s here, right? Now, I was born in Jamaica and I grew up in, you know, um, it was humble beginnings. And uh, we had to make do with what we had. You know, I would go as far as saying that we were quite poor. You know, very humble beginnings. What I want to talk about today was some of the kind of staple, staple dishes or staple food that we would have as kids. Um, now, grow up, growing up in Jamaica, we ate a lot of stuff um, straight from the soil, a lot of produce. Jamaica is known for producing um, all kind of stuff um, when it comes to produce. We, we, we ate from the soil, so to speak. So we ate a lot of yams, sweet potatoes, you know, dashin, cocoa, or some people call it edo. Um, we ate a lot of sweet cassava, um, you know, a whole lot of stuff. We also ate a lot of beans, you know, like red peas, gongo peas, you know, um, I, my grandmother used to talk about this one called Bambis. <laughs> yeah, we ate um, broad beans. Then we also had a lot of fruits. One of the dishes that I enjoy having as a kid um, was soup. I, I, I love soup. I love my red pea soup and I love my gungu soup and I love my pumpkin, you know, my pumpkin soup, you know. But today I want to talk about you know, the challenges of um, growing up in an environment where uh, we never had electricity, so, you know, eating at night, not that you couldn't find your mouth, but, you know, sometimes you want to see what you're eating. So eating at night, um, using um, a bottle torch or the kitchen bitch <laughs> or, 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 you know, a lamp um, could be a challenge. Now, for the most part, Jamaicans, um, we, we love to eat early. Dinner was ready by 5 o'clock most, most evenings, right? So, for the most part, we had dinner quite early. But, you know, there are times when, um, for whatever reason, the dinner might be late, right? I can recall back in the day when gungo was in season. Now, Jamaicans loved their gungo soup, at least when I was growing up. We loved our gungo soup. We love, um, we love the, 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 the green gungo soup. We love the dry gungo soup, right? Now, if you grew up then, or if you have ever tried it, um, you would know that um, the, green, the, the dry gungo soup takes much longer to cook, right? We never had a pressure cooker, right? So if you're using that to make soup, you might have to soak it overnight, or um, you might have to start cooking it maybe an hour or two hours ahead. You know, it's just so that it can be cooked through properly, right? So, I can recall um, instances when um, my grandmother would be making um, gungo soup. I'm talking about the dry gungo soup now. And for some reason, the, the pot was late. What I mean when I say that the pot was late uh, really means that, you know, dinner was late for that evening, right? And it was getting dark. Now, if you grew up in a tropical country, right, you would know that there are a lot of bugs around. Um, certain bugs or insects are common at, at different times of the year, right? And one one insect or bug uh, that was common around um, the gungo, the, you know, the gungo time. Um, oh, let me back up a little bit. When I talk about gungo, right, I'm talking about uh, what we call, in North America, we call it pigeon peas, right? Uh, and pigeon peas, um, most, a lot of it, apart from Jamaica, a lot of it is grown in Central America. So the ones that, the pigeon peas that we 
eat here from the tin uh, most of the time are imported from Central America under different brands, right? But when I was growing up, we planted it. You know, we had crops of um, pigeon peas. So uh, when I talk about gongo, that's what I'm talking about. That's a local name for pigeon peas. All right, so let's go back to the, the meat of the matter. Yeah, so as I was saying, you know, um, living in a tropical country, there are a lot of bugs. <laughs> and bugs, certain bugs are more frequent at certain times of the year. Right now, there was this bug, we, we, we never knew, we don't know, at least I don't know to this day what the real name of that bug is. But all I know, um, it was quite common around the gungo season, okay? And they would be flying around, especially when it started to get dark in the evening. And it was said that you never want one of those bugs get in your ears, because if they should get in your ear and get into the ear jump, you know, up in your ear canal, that's a problem. You have a big problem there. But anyway, so my grandmother would cook a pot of gongo soup, and um, these bugs would be flying around at night. Now, you know, after the soup is cooked, uh, we get our bowl of soup and we're sitting in the kitchen. Um, not much light in the kitchen, maybe just um, a light from the a bottle torch or the kitchen bitch or maybe a, 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 a regular lamp that we use in the house. But needless, needless to say, sometimes um, we were eating in, a, in, in dark conditions, right? And these bugs would be flying around. Now, sometimes these bugs end up in your soup and <laughs> they end up in your soup without you realizing it. So guess what happened? You're, yeah, they're enjoying your gungo soup and you know, you're, you, take, you, 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 you know, you have your, have your fork or your spoon and you take up a piece of yam and you know, you, you eat it. Um, you take up a, a scoop of gungo and you, you know, you're chewing it and you're enjoying your soup, then suddenly you, feel, you felt something crunchy in your mouth, right? You, you, you're tuk tuk, you, you check, you know, <laughs> what was that thing? When you're upon close examination, you know, you realize you have been eating some of these, what we call then, June bugs. Some people call them May bugs. Some people call them June bugs. Depending on which month they were more common or depending on what part of the island you were from. Right? So sometimes, um, you know, you're having gungu soup, you know, in the evening, in you know, eating in dark conditions, and these bugs get in, get in the soup. Now, can you imagine? You're, you're trying to... <laughs> you can barely find food to eat. My grandmother you know, God bless her, um, went through this struggle to find, find us food. And, you know, she prepared a, a nice pot of gungu soup. You're enjoying it, you know, you have your dumpling inside of it, you have, you know, cocoa, um, yellow yam or Thai yam or whatever kind of food it's inside of it. And it might be some corn pork or whatever is in the soup, but soup nice, man. I'm telling you, soup nice. And then you're eating your soup and then you start feeling these crunchy things inside the soup. You know, I mean, we were aware that these bugs could get in the soup, but for, for you know, sometimes they were so common, they were so, there was so much of them flying around that inevitably one or two of them unknowingly is going to end up in your, in your soup. It seems as if this... It seemed as if the soup kind of attracted them. I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe not. But nevertheless, sometimes these bugs end up in your bowl of soup and you end up, uh, you know, crunching, or crunching on one or two of them before you realize what is happening. Yeah, so some of the, those were some of the challenges, um, you know, we had as kids growing up, um, you know, eating, are in an environment where you never had enough light, um, we never had electricity, so it was just a bottle torch in the kitchen or 
maybe it was just a bright moonlight outside. Sometimes we'll be sitting outside the kitchen on a rock, you know, a stone, um, you know, outside the kitchen. But nevertheless, it was it was dark. It, you know, it was not ideal conditions to be eating certain kind of food um, when you have all these insects flying around. Now, I don't know whether or not these uh, insects are still. <clears throat> I haven't, sorry, I haven't asked anyone whether or not these insects are still um, in Jamaica, right? Um, but, you know, that's one of my childhood memories. <laughs> Eating, having a bowl of gungu soup or pigeon pea soup, as it, you know, as it is known here in, in, in Canada, and, um, and having these bugs landing in your soup without you realizing it and you end up crunching on, on a couple of them. Oh, man. But guess what? You're not going to throw away the soup. I can tell you that. I mean, you're going to examine that soup carefully and you're going to just continue to eat because who could afford to throw away a nice bowl of soup because a little bug, a little bug that looks like the pigeon, <laughs> looks like the, um, the pigeon peas got in it. No way. You're not going to throw your soup away. So, like I said, those were some of the challenges we had uh, as kids um, or growing up. Uh, maybe they were not even challenges. We called those a little, little adventures, so to speak. And um, what was life like for you, um, you know, growing up and, um, and eating, eating outside, eating in less than ideal um, situation, you know, lighting situations and all of that? You know, um, did you grow up in that kind of environment where you never had electricity and, and that kind of stuff, um, where light was, you know, at a premium? I mean, you, we, you couldn't afford the fuel, or back home we used kerosene. Back then, we used kerosene, which is the fuel, um, to, for, our lamp, you know, for lamp light and for, for torches. But there are times when you don't have enough kerosene for lamplight, moreover, to put in a torch, you know, a bottle torch or, or the kitchen bitch, which is another little lamp that we use, in, you know, in the, in, in the kitchen. Um, so what was it like for you? Did you grow up in an environment like that? Um, if you're not from Jamaica, maybe somewhere else, you know, some other Caribbean island or some other parts of the world, but you, you, you know, you grew up in humble beginnings in similar situations to to what I just described. What was it like for you? What were some of the things that end up in, ended up in your, um, in your food and you still had to eat it? <laughs> Let me hear in the comments below, right? And if you like the video, um, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the like button either, all right? I'm gonna be, dropping a lot of videos we have a lot of stuff i i have a lot of stuff to talk about so until we talk again source of food here take care of yourself all right